Hey, what's up guys? This is Optipop. It is available for both the Nexus 6 and the Nexus 4, and it's pretty stable, and the performance is pretty great on both Despair and the Hell's Core kernels. So there are some new updates. I'm currently on an older update, and I kind of recommend if you're going to check this ROM out, you should flash the build of May 22nd as of this video that should be coming to you on May 25th. Now it is worth noting that this is also using the Uber toolchain, which is going to be a little bit better on performance, or at least that is the consensus on the Android uh, development community. It's also running Android 5.1.1 as of this video. And as I mentioned, it is pretty stable. Performance has been pretty impressive. I do have a couple little negatives or nitpicks in between my personal preference. And that is you do have this Optipop tweaks menu. And I really am a fan of this gesture swipe based menu system. But Optipop's menu system is a little bit of a disappointment. And what I mean by this is while it's nice, it's also a bit tedious because you have to swipe all the way to the specific menu or toggle or setting that you want to use. And not only just that, there's also some other settings throughout the other settings menu. And it gets a little confusing where they are or sometimes you're just not remembering exactly where they were and it just becomes a little bit difficult. So that's my only negative with this particular ROM. Now in Octopop Tweaks, you are going to have your menu settings for the most part. And that's going to include your status bar, your navigation bar, the notification drawer, the power menu setup, UI customization, which is basically going to kind of steal some of the settings with the animation scales from developer options, as well as your recent panel settings. And then you're going to have a privacy guard. You're also going to find this, however, duplicated in the security settings, and I'll go over that in a minute. And then you are going to have a wake lock blocker. So you can enable this and disable wake locks. Now there is a save and a reset up here, but I don't really think they are working, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Now let's go ahead and talk about it in terms of what features you get. Now in the battery style and the percentage, you get your basic stuff. The only difference here with this ROM is you get your circle dotted, so it's gonna give a little dot around the circle battery icon. Quick pull down will be based on right or left. You also have the option to disable it. That's basically your little quick pull down there. Brightness control by sliding on the status bar, double tap to sleep on the status bar. You also have your show notification counts and you have your clock and date. Now the clock and date's going to take you into another menu and then you'll be able to disable your clock and date with the toggle. You can change the color if you want to, so you can go to a red, whatever color you want to choose. And you can also adjust the alignment from right to center and then your date format. You can also throw up a network traffic indicator if you want to, both incoming and outgoing. You can also adjust that color value. You can adjust the display units, the update interval, and you can also set up an auto hide if you want that specific toggle. You also have your show weather, and this is going to enable a weather status on your header up here. I actually like this feature, and you can refresh this however often you want to, and it will basically give you a forecast. You can also change the icons and get really customized there through your clock widget settings, which is your C-Lock clock. So you can go into your weather panel in here. You will have to enable GPS to get initialized or started, so it can gather your coordinates and information specifically for that and then you can adjust everything else from there. Navigation bar, you can disable the navigation bar if you use swipe navigation, LMT, or pie controls, or you can use the nav bar if you want to. Button and layout's pretty standard stuff here. You can add more buttons. You can change your button layout to the Samsung style or whatever you want. You can add more buttons, and then you have your menu button there option if you want to have that. You also have your enable ring right there, your nav bar ring. So you can go in here, edit that up. You can disable the Google launch if you want to specifically. You can add applications, so you can add G+, you can add a torch if you want to, real quick toggles. You can also disable the Google, you can rearrange it. So once you have that set up, you'll be able to launch those specifically. And then you can also disable it on the fly if you want to disable that specific feature. But you do have some other advanced options, it's pretty cool, with the kill all, excuse me, kill app back button. So if you long press the back button, it will kill the foreground app. You can set up your own kill delay so it goes from 1x all the way up to 2x, or you can go really, really low. Now, you do have some limitations here with your tiles. You do have a lot of tiles to choose from, but the limitation is basically you're only going to get three per row. You cannot get the four option unless you have Expose installed and you use a custom module. Now, I'm not a big fan of Expose. I don't recommend using it, but you can technically 
set that up if you want to, but you do get some nice tiles. You can enable the first row option there and get your advanced features there with Wi-Fi settings and what have you. You can also disable that for the three row. And then you can also enable the advanced location quick settings. Brightness slider you can disable if you want to if you're using the status bar instead. And you can get haptic feedback when you enable a certain setting in your quick settings. Power menu, full customization here. You can adjust anything you want. You can get your screenshot screen recorder, which also has the advanced screen recorder options built in. So you can adjust that on the fly down there at the bottom. You have your airplane mode and then sound panel. So you can actually go in there and get all of your different sound priorities. UI customization, as I mentioned, this kind of carries over the animation scales from developer options. You can disable the search bar. You can enable clear all recents. Now, you're only gonna get this in the four corners. There is no center option. Privacy guard is included, so you can set this up specifically for each application you want to, or you can enable it by default for all applications. Wake lock blocker is included. As I mentioned, you can go in here. If you're having any wake lock issues, you can block it specifically. Now, like I mentioned, there are some other things spread out throughout the settings menu, and the first one to go over would be display, which is going to have your expanded desktop and your LCD density baked in in here. So you can change your LCD density, it is included. You can go from 420 all the way to 616. You also have your wake up options with volume rockers and you can adjust the wake up on charge. You have your sound and notifications where you can link the ring and notification volumes. You also have your volume panel timeout. Default is three, but you can go all the way to 15 seconds. You do have advanced sound options where you can disable the less frequent notifications. You can use the default behavior or you can go from three to 10 or 30 minutes actually, excuse me. You also have the option to disable some specific volume warning and adjustment sounds here, your media controls and inverting your volume rockers and landscape. And then you have your LED notifications and your battery LED notifications. Heads up notifications included as well. You can disable this completely or you can change up your timeout intervals. And you also have your do not disturb and blacklisted specific applications that you can add. And then last but not least, security is going to have your lock screen shortcuts. You can enable these by default. You can disable them or you can select a specific application that you would like to launch based on your applications. You also have long press lock icon to sleep. So if you are in your lock screen and you long press this, it will place your device back to sleep and then you have your blacklist. So you can blacklist phone numbers or messages from getting to your phone or device. But I think that pretty much sums it up. Everything else is pretty standard. It's a great ROM, it's very stable for the most part. There are a couple little force close issues with certain applications. It may be dependent on which kernel you are using, but it runs pretty great and performance is pretty solid. As you can see here, I have a lot of stuff open and I'm not having too much of a difficulty with using anything in particular rock solid on hell's core and optipop running the may 22nd build 5.1.1 android hope you guys enjoyed the video hope it was helpful if i left anything out you can leave a comment in the comment section below i'll leave everything in the description that you need to get this running on your device and as always i'll catch you guys in the next video